You might be forgiven for thinking that what is in this scene is what a typical electronics hobbyist would have in their workshop. And why this next scene makes no sense at all. This is a glass jar. That is the vacuum chamber. So it probably still doesn't make sense yet, but the reason why I've got a glass jar and I've showed you the vacuum chamber is because I need to store powders. And when I need to store powders, I need the moisture free. Now the reason why this has come up is because of things like SpaceX, Elemental Maker, and a few other channels I've been following lately. You might start to form a pattern on what I might be getting at. I'm not going to state it outright because I'll get demonetized before I get monetized. And that's not a good start. So anyway, let's show you how to put a vacuum inside this jar without any valves or without any tubes. Let's see how we can do it. So probably the quick and easiest way of, of pulling a vacuum within a jar that doesn't have any sort of openings or valves or anything like that is the way I find that's worked for me is that you can notice that this, this used to be a pickle jar. And when you first purchase it, it is under a vacuum. So how do we get that vacuum back in there when we don't have any openings? And you can't just put the lid on inside the vacuum chamber once you've pulled the air. So it's pretty, pretty simple. What I found is putting the lid on the jar and just turning it until you can just feel the seal engaged. Now, if you have a look, you might be able to see it here, is that there's a foam seal that's sort of glued to the top side or the underside of the lid here. And that seal needs to sit just as it engages the top of the jar. You can just feel that resistance starting. It's only very slight. So I'll just stop the video here while I'm editing it. I failed to mention the reason why I put the lid on with just the, the seal engaging. That is to allow that when you pull the vacuum in the chamber, you can still pull air from inside the jar. So if the lid was too tight, you couldn't pull that vacuum. But at least this way, when you do, uh, you can still pull that air from the, from the jar. And then when the process is finished and you bring the vacuum chamber back to atmosphere and let all the air back in because that jar has has the seal in close proximity to the top rim of that glass of the, of the jar it will suck itself down onto that onto that jar and then lock in that vacuum and then you can just finish off tightening it up when you take the jar out of the chamber and then knowing that there's no vacuum in here the lid does have this telltale so you know when uh there's no vacuum in that jar. Or when you do purchase something like uh, pickles from the shop, if the lid does this, you can tell that the jar's been compromised and you don't buy that one. So once you've engaged that seal, only ever so slightly, pop it in your vacuum chamber, if you have one. And start pulling a vacuum. You can probably see that gauge starting to pull a vacuum. I'll stop the video here and we'll come back once it has pulled a vacuum and we can see what we can do. Okay, that's been running for about three or four minutes now and you can see we've definitely pulled a nice, uh, nice vacuum there. So we're well and truly over um, 30 inches of mercury there. So what we'll do, we'll just seal off the vacuum line and turn off the vacuum pump. And you can remember when I stated we've just slightly sealed that jar by just letting the seal engage. So all we've got to do now is let the atmosphere, let the chamber come back to atmosphere and we'll take our jar out. Now with any luck, this has worked first time around. Now I don't know if you can see, but I'm just going to finish tightening the lid because remember we only just loosely fit the lid earlier. So that has turned probably another, maybe a tenth of a turn, it didn't take much. And you can also tell that, maybe not on camera, 
but the lid has a slight concave shape to it and the telltale doesn't work, meaning that we have pulled a vacuum in the jar. So this is all very relevant because of my next scene, it all start to make sense. But just to prove we have pulled a vacuum, have a listen to this. And that is clear as day that that had a vacuum in it. So let's move over to the next scene and everything will start making sense. Okay, so those of you in the know will probably recognize most of these ingredients. And no, I don't have a toilet roll fetish, although you could be forgiven for thinking that. But what I do have is a new interest to add to the repertoire. Now you can pretty much guess what that is. Here's a sample. Never thought I'd find the use for a, a Barocca tube, but there you go. There will be upcoming projects over the course of the next year involving most of this. The secret ingredients in here, you won't know what that is because I've blurred out that label. So the reason why I showed you about pulling that vacuum in that jar ends up looking like this. So here we have some icing sugar, which is really old icing sugar. And it is in a jar with a vacuum. The only reason why we keep it like that, because if you look how loose and free it is, it just hasn't been ground into a fine powder. That's the same stuff. And that's what you need to do in the process of making these uh, objects. So basically the ground fine, ready to use sugars will go into their very own jar and when I'm not using them uh, and they're going to be stored for any length of time they'll be put in the jar and pulled down and, had a, and have a vacuum just keeps the moisture and everything nice and fresh uh, this is the untreated and that jar will be for the tr treated funnily enough uh, Western Australia does have a sugar flying club and I'll be looking to uh, join them if I need to use their, uh, let's say, what's a nice way of saying it? Their sites where we can, uh, you know, whoosh. that's the plan anyway. But there will be a lot of testing of, of mixtures and uh, I'm going to make an electronic test bed, very similar to a YouTuber you might already know, but I'm going to make my own version. I've actually got the parts coming and they're on their way. So there will be uh, a lot of, what are, a lot of, a few videos um, in this space, if you know what I mean. So thumbs up, comment, uh, give me any ideas with any of your experiences that I may have, may be able to uh, translate into this venture. But yes, with everything else I've got going on in the shop, this is a new part of that. And uh, I'm super keen to uh, research, learn more and grow in this space. It's relatively safe. You just got to know, you know, practice your um, safety procedures and all that. So there will be uh, a bit of content in this space. So don't tell anyone. And thanks for watching.